Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. And just a little while ago, I was in London at the Ubuntu Insider event. They had the release of the BQ Aquarius E4.5 Ubuntu Touch. So the Aquarius E4.5 is the first Ubuntu phone that has been launched on the market. And now Canonical is working on another phone. This is the Mizu, or Meizu, however you pronounce that, MX4. It first came out as an Android phone, and now we're going to be seeing an Ubuntu Touch variant as well. Canonical is very excited to launch this phone. It's still several months away from being launched out to the public, but I had a chance to play a little bit with it, so I want to talk about that right now. I think that the allure of this new MX4 device for Canonical is that it's got a lot better specs so that it better showcases their operating system. That was a comment that I had when I first played with this BQ phone. It's got a lot lower end specs. I think it's more marketed as a developer phone and so people can have a chance to get their hands on what Canonical is working on here. But it's really nice that we're seeing Ubuntu Touch on much better hardware. Admittedly, right now, the image that is on the Meizu MX4 is just the one from the BQ phone, so it's not running smoothly yet. It's not optimized, so I didn't get a chance to see any type of buttery smooth interface, so that's something I'm waiting for in the near future. So what are we getting in terms of specifications on this new Ubuntu phone? Well, we've got a MediaTek SoC 6595, We've got an octa-core CPU, Cortex-A17, 2.2 gigahertz, that's a four-core cluster, and then another four-core cluster, Cortex-A7 is clocked at 1.7 gigahertz. There's a power VR, G6200 GPU, and two gigabytes of RAM. So all of this is a step up from the MediaTek SoC that was on the BQ device. Quad-core Cortex-A7 is up to 1.3 gigahertz, and a Mali 400 GPU. So now taking a look around the phone, if you haven't seen the MX4 already, we have a 5.36 inch display. It's an interesting aspect ratio. And I noticed that the display has a very cool looking white point. So moving on with the front, there is a capacitive button that's not yet linked to anything. So you can touch it and it's not going to do anything for now, but when it's released, Meizu and Canonical are trying to figure out what to do with this button exactly. So I'm not sure what it's going to do yet, then also on the front, we have a two megapixel camera. We've got the receiver. Then on the top, we have the power button. There's a microphone and standard headphone jack. On the left-hand side, there is a volume rocker. Then on the bottom, we have the speaker, microphone, and USB charging port. Nothing on the right. Then checking out the back, we have a 20.7 megapixel camera. It's a Sony sensor. It's the IMX220, so it's the same sensor that's on the Xperia Z3. And Canonical is very excited to have this hardware on here, this higher grade hardware. I didn't have a chance to play around with the camera because Meizu is going to be adding a bunch of filters and fun features for the camera. And those aren't on here yet. Again, this is just the BQ ROM image. So I will be very curious to see what the image quality comes out looking like. It's got a good sensor on the thing, so hopefully they don't mess it up. It will also have the ability to record 4K video H.625. So we shall see. So right now when looking around the interface, again, it is not smooth. That is something that I will be hoping to see in the near future with these specs. If you really want to see how the Ubuntu Touch interface works, please check out the link in the description to check out the video I made for the BQ phone where I really show how that works. What I noticed so far with the MX4 is that it's got very little bezels, especially on the sides, and that's nice when going about the interface because your thumb doesn't have very far to move. So it feels very, very natural in that way. So I like that. I like that a lot. I talked to Canonical and they said that in terms of scopes, just like I had hoped, they are wanting to make them more advanced. So just say for the eBay scope, I'm hoping to see, and as well as they, they're hoping to see that you'll be able to bid right from that eBay scope or when using the Amazon scope, be able to do a one-click buy. So I'm hoping in the near future that we start seeing more usefulness of these scopes. So this phone feels very nice in hand to me. It's made out of aluminum at least the frame is, but on the back it is a plasticky back cover. It's a matte feeling so that it doesn't hold fingerprints. You can remove that back cover and underneath the back cover we have a non-removable battery. Unfortunately, it's 3,100 milliamp hours. That is a good size. And then we've also got a slot for a micro SIM. There's no spot under there for a SD card. 
but it looks like it comes in three capacities, 16, 32, and 64 gigabytes. At least that is what their spec sheet is saying. I'm not sure which one will be purchasable. I think that what I was most excited to see alongside this Meizu Ubuntu phone was the desktop convergence working on a tablet. The idea is that you can connect a peripheral Bluetooth mouse to it, and then it goes to desktop mode. So when you connect the mouse, it goes to the desktop mode and you can go about the interface and it looks like a desktop interface. And then when you disconnect the mouse, it goes right back to the tablet interface. So I thought that that looked really cool and we will be seeing that sometime in the future as that is the idea of what's going to be happening with Ubuntu Touch. So that is all that I really can say about this device for now. It's one that I would love to get my hands on and actually do a review once it comes out. So if at all possible, if I can get my hands on one, stay tuned for that. So thank you everyone for watching. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Also, I'd really love it if you would support me on Patreon. That is a campaign that I am currently running. We have hit past the $1,000 mark, and that's awesome because it helps purchasing devices and to going to events like MWC. So check out patreon.com slash Erica Griffin if you want to contribute any little bit. It's really helpful for me. And I've also got some cool perks that you can check out as well. So thank you everyone for watching and have a good night.